decided to give floss tube a try. I know this isn't the standard floss tube, tube format, but I figured you guys would rather see my dog Maui here than me anyways. And, um, you know, I, I haven't really found a good place to film quite yet. I've got my husband who's working from home because of quarantine and my sister who also works, comes over here and works at our house just because she finds fewer distractions working here and she's way more productive here. And then my son has actually been recently identified as a close contact to a positive COVID case at school. So he is having to quarantine for a couple weeks and do school virtually. So I've got three people at home all doing virtual stuff. And so that means I and Maui have to hide out in our bedroom whenever I want to do something that's quiet. But anyways, um, I thought I would show you some of my cross stitching that I've been working on. I have quite a few works in progress going on, but um, I actually stopped stitching for a couple of years. I just got really burned out. And during that time, I kind of discovered diamond painting and have gone like whole hog on it. On it. I, I really enjoy diamond painting. I think the thing that I love most about it is the fact that I can finish things pretty quickly and that's very satisfying. I'm a slow stitcher and you know to get a finished product really does take a while. But anyways, um, let me show you what I've been working on the last couple of weeks. Here it is. It's called Flower of Bouquet in Green. It's by Jan Hauptman. He is, I think he's a Danish designer, but here's the sampler right here. And I'll show you what I've got so far. So here's this. This is basically the top row of the sampler. And you can see that I've, um, I've been gritting my fabric with a red fishing line and I found that I really like this a lot. It works well, it pulls out very easily. It does take quite a bit of time to grid, but you know what? I've, I've kind of realized that it's really worth it because um, I still make mistakes, but not as many mistakes. And I actually find out a lot quicker so I can fix it a lot easier. And I only say this because a few weeks ago, I've ended up having to throw away my Angel of Summer project by Lavender and Lace. I was so close to finishing it too. So it was a painful thing to do, but um, I was just way off in my count. This was before I was gritting and um, I tried fixing it and there was just no fixing. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I just had to chuck it. And that was just painful because, you know, I've been working on it a while and plus it was on a piece of hand dyed fabric. So it was double whammy. It was terrible. So I'm thinking, I'm convinced I am going to grid from now on, but see, here it is. This is stitched on 32 count, um, antique white Lugana. And this is a full yard. I mean, look, this is just a top row. Look at how much more I got to go. Let me see if I can unfold this. Yeah, here, I'll drape it over Maui. <laughs> yeah, this is a full yard and I'm using it all. It's insane. I didn't think samplers were that big, but yep, here we are. So that's what I worked on, my most recent whip. And the way my crafting schedule goes is that I work on the diamond painting I finish that and then in between I'll maybe spend a week or two on a cross stitch project. So I'm probably coming up on working on cross stitch again and I'll show you the one that I plan on going starting with. You may recognize this. This is Japanese Garden by Shadow Lane Designs and I've done a good amount at this point. Um, I think I just need to finish the details on the bottom half and then kind of 
stitch all the details that circle around it plus the over one cranes that she has here but I love Chanelaine designs this is not my first one I've stitched um a couple more or I've stitched two before and completed it I've done white nights in St. Petersburg I'm trying to find a good way to show you this white nights in St. Petersburg and I finished um, medieval town mandala as well so I'm looking forward to this one. This is being stitched on 32 count Belfast linen and it's actually from Silk Weaver. It is a limited edition color called Cupid's Cloud that was released Valentine's Day 2006. <laughs> yeah, this is how long I've been stitching it. <laughs> so yeah, sad. So yeah, you guys tell me that you've got projects this old too but I love it I think it's beautiful I mean look this one little corner is just all beads isn't that beautiful and she just has so many cubes and pearls and bicones and each of the trees in all the corners all represents a different season as well as a different phase of the moon so just so much detail in this. It's amazing. The rock gardens also has a bunch of detail in it. Let's see if I can show you. Really cool, really beautiful. If you ever have a chance to stitch a Chatelaine, I say go for it. Don't, don't be intimidated, just jump right in and you'll see that it's really not that hard as long as you tackle like tackle them in parts. So that's my Japanese garden. And I thought I'd show you guys some things I bought, like stitchy things. Um, this was probably over Black Friday, although I don't know if there really was a great sale, but I decided to get these Edmunds scroll frames. Um, especially like I was thinking of Japanese garden as I was doing it because um, you know, I tend to bead as I go and I stitch out a cue snaps, which doesn't work out too well as you're beading while you go. So I thought I would try this and see if it works well. You know, I can snap my one corner of my or end of my fabric into this raw and then just start rolling it up. And I think it'll work out better for beading. If you guys have a different solution for beading, let me know. Now. And of course, I also bought some fabric. I'm boring. This is just a 36 count Winter Moon Edinburgh linen, 27 by 36. So, this is probably a fat half, maybe. But I'm thinking of stitching the Long Dog Pandemic on it. And um, of course, I've been hearing about silky threads for years never used it and then I decided you know what maybe I'll start it with the pandemic pattern so I bought a bunch of the variegated sulky just to see what I would like you know try to pick a color from there I'm a very visual and tactile person I gotta see and touch the things so that's why I couldn't just pick a color for my next project I kind of had to look at it so I'm kind of leaning towards a couple of colors, but do you guys have any favorites? I'm really excited to try these out. And I also bought, I finally got my first clover. <laughs> Believe it or not, for as long as I've been stitching, I never had one. So decided to get this. It works really well for traveling. And you know, it was just really painful that one time. It happened years ago, but TSA took away my good scissors for cross stitching and I've never forgotten it. So I think having this will be much easier when I travel and bring my cross stitch along the way. And then of course I have to get a pattern too. I don't know when I ever start it, but here it is. It's the Marabilia, um, what's it called? Princess Eliana. So I'm really excited for this one. She uses all of the newer colors from DMC. 
and um, yeah, thought it was really pretty. And then last but not least, I thought I would show you guys this. Anyone recognize this? Clay by Kim makes amazing polymer clay needle minders. And she's best known for her dragons, but she also does flowers and fairy doors. The fairy doors are not needle minders, but she's just an amazing talent. I was able to snag, oh, what did I get? I think a sticker. This is a fairy door sticker. Yes, I got one of her Christmas dragons with the candy cane. Isn't he pretty? I love it. Let's see if I can show you out of the bag. Look at this. I don't know how she does that. With the detail and the shading and everything else. Love it. And I think the needle, which is, she usually has a little scroll thingy. But I think with this one, you can just set the needle on top. It's a pretty strong magnet, so it'll stick to it. And here's the back of it. Kind of coordinates, it's really cute. So it's two magnets, you slide them apart. And then kind of slide it back together on your fabric. And there's your needle minder. Well, anyways, so that's all I got for you guys today. If you made it this far, I thank you very much. And um, I'll probably be doing YouTube or floss tube sporadically since I tend to work on diamond paintings a lot more than I do my cross stitch. But um, yeah, we'll be in touch. If you made it this far, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you like this video, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up and maybe even subscribing if you haven't done so already. And um, I wish you guys a happy holidays, a safe and healthy new year and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye now.